The Baal HaTzilom continues, when all is over and the scale that measures the whole world tips the side of merit, then each individual will have had a part in the deciding way. And without this part, there would not have been the final reckoning. Thus, you find that Rabbi Elazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, does not dispute the words of our sages that all of Israel are guarantors for one another. As we're learning here, the extension of the Matan Torah essay, Ha'arvut, the mutual guarantee. Because I can tip the side to merit or to merit, surely we're all guarantors for each other because we're all capable of adding strength and support to steer the ship in the right direction or shoot a hole in the bottom for all to drown in. Thus, you find that Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, does not dispute the words of our sages that all of Israel are guarantors for one another. Rather, Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, speaks of the future correction of the whole world, whereas our sages speak of the present when only Israel has accepted the Torah. The Rabbi Shita says, The world is judged according to the majority. And the Holy One created an entire world. You can't claim that only Jews are in the world. That they will merit to reach complete perfection. That they will attain the state of clinging to God and connection with Him. And that other peoples are like dust in the wind, with no beginning and no purpose in the end. The Holy One created the world in its entirety so that every person would come to take part in the service of God. The global service of God is gradual, just as an individual spiritual growth is gradual. We must daily train ourselves to have consideration for other people and for God. Little by little, we conquer a part of ourselves and then another part. And certainly the process is a gradual one, also for humanity as a whole. I would like to hone in the word conquer. Really like that. It's a nation conquering another nation because as the Torah describes, there's Kla Yisrael. It's the nation of Israel. And then there's the 70 nations of the world, 70 other languages, which pertain to the 70 aspects of the desire to receive for oneself alone within us. So our innermost point of Yisrael, Yashar Kael, straight to God, being Lishma, our actions being for the sake of heaven, being giving. This quality is to convert, so to speak, and conquer the other nations within, meaning our giving should be conquering our receiving. To put it simply, so too, in the story of the Torah, before the nation of Israel came and conquered the land, there was the Canaanite nations that ruled prior. That story and the Torah is not a storybook, at least not just a storybook, is meaning to describe the spiritual principle that before we have a Geula, before we have redemption, we need Gullus, exile. So too, before we can reach the most exalted state, we need to conquer that which is in the way. Before we got to our inheritance, that is the land of Israel, we had to conquer those Canaanite nations, which alludes to the necessity of conquering the will to receive for oneself alone within us prior to reaching the state of Lishma. Of being Lashem Shemayim, Yashar Kale, straight to God. But we see here that it's for everyone, not just Israel. We are first, relatively speaking, in this journey, because we're supposed to be the example. But it's for everyone. The Rabbi Shita continues. This vision seems like a dream. Even with regard to the nation of Israel, when would the time arrive in which everyone will long 
to cling to God and follow the path of giving and faith. The basic truth is that each of us must focus on healing himself or herself and thereby hasten the process toward the general redemption. As the famous quote says, if you want to change the world, change yourself. We're just clarifying here that the change is to come to that exalted state of giving. However, we must realize that everything is dependent on the will of God, and he determines the length of time it will take. We see that when we are in distress, we search for the true meaning of our lives and stop dealing with nonsense. This is called the way of afflictions, by means of which God shortens the time of a person's development. And a similar process must take place for the world as a whole. Again, there's two aspects. There's the path or the way of afflictions, and there's the path or way of the Torah. The truth is, the bitter truth is, is that regardless of what path you're on, there's great pain. But I heard my rabbi from yeshiva, Rabbi Siegel, Shlita. I remember he would say, pain is not bad. Pain is just pain. Meaning to say it's a necessary prerequisite to growing. Understandably so. It pushes us from the back. It forces us to change our scenario because we don't like to be in pain. So we make moves. We progress. The reason why the path of Torah is also, relatively speaking, a path of pain is because when we are enlightened by the light within the Torah, when we learn and do mitzvot with the intention to fix ourselves, have more amuna, have more faith in the Creator, and to develop love for the other. When we do this, the light that shines within us through these actions shines a light upon the evil within, and then we recognize it. This recognition can be very painful. It should be ideally, and that pain should constitute a reaction should be a catalyst for us to seek help from the Creator, from our mentors, to cry out, literally, to cry out, because the sages say, at least after the fall of the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, that the only gate that's open for all generations to come until the Mashiach is the gates of tears. That's the only way. To truly come to the higher state, we need to cry, literally cry. In the depths of our heart, true prayer, true tears. It can only come through the great pain of the self-awareness of being a pure egoist, which the Creator only reveals to us, slowly but surely, through our progression. So, the sages tell us that when we judge ourselves here, we save ourselves judgment above because everything is accounted for and the spiritual system is exacting. So there's always something being written in the books, so to speak, of our actions and intentions. So if we judge ourselves here, recognize this evil, reflect on it, and do our best to make a change and request for help to make that change, when we save ourselves the judgments from above that we would normally, ex normally experience in the path of suffering. Which is why I said we should, be being, we should be bringing pain upon ourselves. I mean to say the awareness of the evil, the acknowledgement, the cheshbon nefesh and the soul accounting to go through one's day and check where we're holding to say, was I really giving there? Was I really loving? Did I really care? Was it really just for me? So on and so forth. Both paths, being directly from the Creator, as any path is to get us to connect to Him. Because that's what life's about. What is life? To connect to the life of all lives. We have the Vikut, similarity of form. 
Just as he is compassionate, so too we must be. We must reach this point of loving the neighbor as ourself. When we're in the path of Torah, and we bring the pain upon ourselves via the self-criticism and the self-judgment, which should be for a maximum of 30 minutes a day, as the Baal Salma says, and we should only do that from a side of already feeling a state of relative perfection. I think it's important to refrain and clarify the right, left, and middle line as we talk about this. The right line is what we should spend 23 and a half hours a day in. That's shleimus, completion, meaning to say, I'm happy with my portion. Everything I have is perfect. This is exactly what the Creator wants of me in this moment. And He's perfect. He created me, so I must be perfect. All is well. To be besimcha, to be happy with all that one has, to be happy in the moment, to have faith that all will be well and all is well. And this is the best case scenario at this very moment. Only from that consciousness should we go into the left. If we're neutral, so to speak, and we go into the left, then we're susceptible to depression, anxiety, and things of that nature. God forbid. And then, when we notice this evil, when we see that ego within and experience that pain, we're happy about it because it's a great salvation. You can't fix what you can't see. You need to notice the problem in order to fix it. So, all recognition of evil should ideally make us dance. We should be very happy. So, from right, feeling perfection, then seeing the truth of our ego, and then being happy with seeing the truth is kind of going back here, and in essence, that's what the middle line is. That's walking the middle line. And it's a bitter idea, but the Baal Islam says that even if someone is one, one degree off the road, you know, assuming they don't have the guidance and they're not walking the path of truth, then as opposed to being Yashar Kale and getting to the Creator and finishing the job in this lifetime and making one's tiku, making one's correction, they're going to veer because that 1% eventually turns into something totally out of the way. So the path of Torah, of course, is an even quicker assistance for us. So we must judge ourselves besimcha in order to come to this exalted state. I've heard the Rabbi Shita say recently that no, this should be understood, but it's not always so simple. That loving your neighbor as yourself starts at home and then from there friends community town state country world so i'll just check if anyone's tuned in to the live stream in case there's any questions Not that I see. So, thank you so much for watching, listening. Till next time. All the best.